All right, so we want to go ahead and find the slope through uh, at the given point. 1 comma negative 1. So what we uh, learned yesterday, um, Amir, is when we need to go and take the derivative of an implicit equation, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take d over dx on both sides. Okay. You can see here then I'm going to need to take dy dx of both of these terms. So I basically have d over dx of x squared y plus d over dx of 3x equals d over dx of y squared and plus d over dx of 1. So again, remember d over dx is basically saying taking the derivative with respect to x. Well, that's perfectly fine and dandy when we have only x's or a number. But when we have a y, then we need to make sure that we're saying, dandy is a word, we need to make sure that we're, um, when we take the derivative of y, we need to say we took the derivative of y with respect to x. So in this case, you guys can see that we have, uh, when I'm taking the derivative here, I have to use the product rule. And make sure when using the um, product rule, we have to make sure that we, uh, so when we take the product rule, we have 2xy plus, now I need to take the derivative of y. Well, I can take the derivative of y, which is 1, but I need to make sure I include, I just took the derivative of y with respect to x. So I include a dy dx, and then that's times x squared. Plus derivative of 3x, the variables are the same. So therefore, we're perfectly fine just to find the derivative there. The derivative of y squared, I can take the derivative of y squared, but this is derivative of y squared with respect to x. So that's going to be 2y dy dx. And the derivative of, with respect to any variable of a constant, is always going to be 0. Does everybody kind of follow me? That was step number one, or step number two, or something like that. Yes? So basically, I just did the middle term. So basically, what I just did was the quotient rule. I did um, d over dx of uh, x squared times y plus d over dx of y times x squared. Or you could think about it like this. Um, remember, f prime of x times g of x plus g prime of x times f of x product rule, basically over there. But I'm just writing the derivative differently. I'm writing the derivative as d over dx, not f prime, OK? Like, like how the product rule is shown over there. So now what we need to do is collect all the dy dx's on the same side and then go ahead and solve for them. So I'm going to subtract it to, I'm going to solve them. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to solve them on the right side. So I'm just going to subtract a x squared dy dx. So therefore, I have 2xy plus 3 equals 2y dy dx minus x squared dy dx. Now, to solve for dy dx, I need to factor out the dy dx. And therefore, then I can um, finish solving. So I have 2xy plus 3 equals factoring out the dy dx gives me 2y minus x squared times dy over dx. Now I can divide by. Now I can divide by 2y minus x squared. 2y minus x squared. And I can say dy over dx equals 2xy plus 3 over 2y minus x squared. However, ladies and gentlemen, I am not done. That's not what the question asked, was it? The question asked, what is the slope at the given point? So I found out what the derivative of dy dx is, but we need to figure out what the slope is. So remember, that's your x-coordinate, that's your y-coordinate. All I'm simply going to do, the dy dx represents the slope. But now what I need to do is plug in 1 in for x and negative 1 in for y. So I have 2 times 1 times negative 1 plus 3 all over 2 times negative 1 minus 1 squared. So therefore, I end up with a negative 2 plus 3 
over negative 2 minus 1, which equals 1 over negative 3. And that's my final answer. So just adding, the only thing I'm adding to these problems today is now you have a point to evaluate at the end. Okay.